Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Davenport diagrams. So with that, let's give it a go. So I'd like to begin by first reminding you of the bicarbonate buffer system. So this is the chemical equation for the bicarbonate buffer system. And what we're gonna consider in this video is the fact that our body has more than just one buffer. It has multiple buffers working together. So let's just say we have our bicarbonate buffer system in solution with a number of other different buffers. And let's just say we increase the amount of CO2. So when we increase the amount of CO2 in solution, this pushes the reaction forward, forming more bicarbonate and more protons. Now these protons are not gonna remain free in solution. These protons are actually going to be absorbed by other buffers, which will form protonated versions of these buffers. So most of the protons are going to bind to this other buffer, and the major buffer, other than the bicarbonate buffer, is going to be hemoglobin. So now we're gonna talk about the Davenport diagram, because the Davenport diagram takes into account these other buffers when calculating the pH of a solution. So let's just start off by assuming that we have a partial pressure of CO2 equal to 40 torr. And when we do that, we can see the pH of a solution depending upon the concentration of bicarbonate in there. And we can do that by using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So when we graph all of these values on the axes here, what we see is a curve like this. So now what if we were to increase the partial pressure of CO2? If we were to increase the partial pressure of CO2 to maybe 80 torr, and we were to plug the different values into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, we would get the following curve. So what we see here with this curve is that when we increase the amount of CO2 in the air, or the partial pressure of CO2 in the air, this caused the curve to move upwards. And if we were to decrease the CO2, this would cause the curve to move downwards. So these three curves show the bicarbonate buffer system for a number of different partial pressures of CO2. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the non-bicarbonate buffers. And the non-bicarbonate buffers can be shown with this line. So this is the line for the non-bicarbonate buffers. And it's at the intersection between these two lines. So let's just say the red line and the green line, which would show the pH of the solution. So it's the combination of these two lines together that is the Davenport diagram. So what are the applications of this diagram? Well, let's look at one condition. So one condition is respiratory acidosis. So respiratory acidosis is when you have a high amount of CO2 in your alveoli. So this would be analogous to the partial pressure of CO2 being equal to 80 torr. And the curve for that partial pressure is this curve. Now, in order to find the pH of the solution, you would have to bring in the non-bicarbonate buffers. And when you do that, you draw the line and when you do that, you find the intersection, and it's at the intersection where you would find the pH of the solution. So the pH in this case would be around 7.2. So the increase in CO2 caused a decrease in pH, but the pH did not change too much because most of the protons formed are absorbed by non-bicarbonate buffers because it's free protons that acidify a solution. So what about a respiratory alkalosis? Well, a respiratory alkalosis is when you have a decreased amount of CO2 inside the lungs. And this would be analogous to a partial pressure of CO2 being equal to 20 torr. So the curve for that is this one. And in order to find the pH of the solution, you draw your non-bicarbonate buffer line. And at the intersection of the two is the pH. So the pH increased by a little bit as well because of this respiratory alkalosis. Now, what about metabolic acidosis and alkalosis? So for metabolic acidosis and alkalosis, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the bicarbonate buffer curve for 40 torr. And we're going to draw our base non-bicarbonate buffer line. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to see what a metabolic acidosis would look like. So metabolic acidosis would be a downward shift of the uh, green curve here. And this would produce a pH that is lower than 7.4. And a metabolic alkalosis would produce this curve, where you get an upward shift, and this would produce a pH greater than 7.4. So how, do each, how does the body respond to these four conditions? So if you have a respiratory acidosis, remember this is producing a pH that is lower. 
So in order to compensate for the respiratory acidosis, the body is going to produce a metabolic acid alkalosis. So the metabolic alkalosis, at a, for a, which is the response for a respiratory acidosis, produces this curve. And what you should notice by the intersection from the response is that the pH is now closer to that 7.4 value. So the response to a respiratory acidosis is a metabolic alkalosis. Now what about a respiratory alkalosis? So if you have a respiratory alkalosis, the opposite is true. The body is going to compensate with a metabolic acidosis. And what you see here at the intersection is that the pH is now closer to 7.4. So the response to a respiratory alkalosis is a metabolic acidosis. Now, what if you have a metabolic acidosis? Well, the body is going to respond with a respiratory alkalosis, as we see right here. And when you get this, the pH is now closer to that 7.4 range. And then the last one is a metabolic alkalosis. So if you have a metabolic alkalosis, the body is going to respond with a respiratory acidosis and this would bring the pH closer to that 7.4 value. So I hope this video helped you understand how Davenport diagrams are used and what their purpose is and how they can display different conditions in our body. So I thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.